Yeah. Right, welcome to episode three of D it is episode three, isn't it? Yeah, I think got it is. Here episode here. three of Geek Gather. <laughs> Just to have a check, I've got episode one. Um, where we talk about movies and TV shows and trailers and geek stuff in general. Um, and today we've got with us, as usual, we've got John. So hello, John. Hey, everybody. And then we've got Spencer with us as well. Um, talk hey, guys. Stuff. So we've got um, a few, well, a few, well, one movie, one, two of us have seen. Two movies, and only one of us has seen. Uh, but then TV shows okay. that we've seen <laughs> and loads of trailers today, tons of trailers, because there's been tons of trailers yeah. out. So I think quite yeah, I think there's about four movies I've seen that you guys haven't yet. Yeah. Um, well, it's because yeah, I only just, go and see good movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, um, but yeah, I will see two of them this week. Uh, this week, probably at some point. Right, so move, we'll move swiftly on to, like, it's already on screen already, Bad Boys 4 with uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Lawrence. Um, it was all right. Did what he said on a tin. Didn't need to be anything special. It was just them two doing their Bad Boys thing that they've done in every other Bad Boys movie they've been in. I've got to admit, I went in with low expectations, but having seen the other ones at the cinema, I kind of thought, you know... You kind of have to, I want, right? to see, you have to see. want to see where it goes. You know what, what what's up with Will Smith after the big slap, and um, it was pretty terrible, but really, really entertaining. I think what summed up yeah. for me was my wife went to me ten minutes in. This is shit, and then like literally about another ten minutes in, it's like actually it's quite good. I'm not quite enjoying it. It was this, yeah. I think I said it took a while to to light the fuse, but once it got going. Like the last half was so the full best, of action. The best scene is the cod scene of his his um his um his uh, son-in-law. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was fucking son, cool as yeah. shit. Like that was like probably the best scene in the film. Because I mean, he was, it was like, just, it murdering was just a, no, those it dudes. Was like, <laughs> it was very much if you like stuff like the Fast and the Furious, it's yeah, that yeah, yeah. level of unplug your brain and just accept it's dumb, but you're gonna be entertained. Yeah, you're gonna be entertained from straight from the get go. And I've heard they're probably going to do another one. Which of course is, they are. Yeah, just keep the money train riding. But I've got to admit, I, I, I kind of wish this had been the last one. I feel like it, it ended on a high. Just leave it there. But who knows? The expectation of this film is the expectation I'm going in to watch Axel F this weekend. I, I don't think that movie should have existed at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, John's got strong opinions on this. Oh, is it out this weekend? Axel no. F. Oh, no, no. Axel F's out today. Bad Boys but, but Bad Boys Fortune. John's got oh, really. Oh, Bad Boys Fortune. John, John's okay. got a super strong I, opinion on this. I don't think Will Smith should have been allowed to make movies for 10 years. In yeah. <laughs> every other instance where an actor gets accused of assault, they lose their career. I mean, just ask Jonathan Majors. Exactly. Not saying he didn't do it. Not saying yeah. he didn't do it. There's no real proof he did it but the second the accusation happened he lost his career along with every other actor that's ever been accused we watched will smith in front of a live audience on tv assault somebody for making what is the lamest joke now chris <laughs> rock chris rock is a shock comic he could have said things so much worse he made quite possibly the lamest made-for-TV joke possible and got assaulted on screen. And the only thing that happened to Will Smith was he's not allowed to go to the Oscar show for 10 years. Yeah, big work. He can win an award. He just can't go and collect it. He <laughs> went and sat back down, got an award later that night, and went to parties after. If you, If someone in your office made a joke about you and you stood up and slapped them, you would not sit back down and get to work for the rest of the day. <laughs> so true. I don't understand how he got away with doing it in public. And the only thing that happened to him was he doesn't get to go to an award show for 10 years. That just seems really weak. They should have at least taken his SAG card so that he could not act for 10 years. That should have at least been the pub publishment or punishment for doing it publicly. But really, I, I love I love Will Smith. I've seen a lot of his movies. I own a lot of his movies. But just the fact that he didn't get any punishment for doing it publicly, had it happened in a nightclub or in the backstage area where no one could see it, and it could have been 
brushed off, maybe he'd get away with it. But the fact that he did it on live TV means yeah, he should not have been fair, allowed. I mean, he's married to Jada Pinkett Smith. Hasn't he suffered enough? Maybe, <laughs> maybe he served time already, and they thought we'll, we'll let him off because he's already served. You know, years. He's already done his ten years. And, and, and his I, mean, I still, I still don't think he should have been allowed to make. John, didn't you, didn't, didn't you originally burn? Didn't you originally burn all your DVD, all your Blu-rays you own of his movies, and you got them? But when I, I, mean, I, <laughs> I just, I, I'm of the opinion that he shouldn't have been allowed. Like. Like, I don't even know if they've convicted Majors yet, but I know he's supposed to be acting in another movie. But, like, if he was found guilty, he shouldn't be allowed to make more movies. Like, we yeah. shouldn't be glorified. Different people. rules, different people, though, right? That's... It's not like it's not like he just gets drunk and make an idiot, makes an idiot of himself. Like, there's a thing about assault. Like, he shouldn't be allowed to assault someone and then go back to work the next day. To yeah. make... Twenty million dollars a picture, like it just shouldn't be allowed. Oh, you took the right shine off our fucking glowing review of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's a great movie. No, nope. <laughs> you shouldn't be making movies. <laughs> well, what I'm gonna do is, um, I, I gave it a seven out of ten, but I'm gonna give Will Smith's punishment a minus ten out of ten. There you go to balance to balance it all up a bit. I and mean, did only... he have to dust off Martin Lawrence for this movie? Like, did he not... Did, he, oh, did they find him in a dumpster and be like, hey, <laughs> take another bath? They, they, so they, they, just, they just literally like, took, took him out, shaved him up, took the alcohol away from him and said, right, <laughs> you have to act. Um, my wife just said, spend 7 out of 10. So I can use like, 7 out of 10 spend. Seven, I'm like, there's no way he wasn't going to give it a 7. No, I can't use a number. You're going to have to, like... She literally so stood at the window and went, 7 out of 10. So now uh, that number is out of my uh, scoring system. I'm just going to say a 6.9 then. Out of 10. <laughs> 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 she read the review. She knew it was coming as well. It's not to be honest, I watched the Hello. first two bad boys... I don't think I saw the third one. I doubt I'm going to see the fourth one. Oh, watch it when it comes out. It's funny. It's just funny. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's entertaining. It, it's, it's, shit, it's, just... it's shit funny, right? It's just, it, like Spen said, you just switch your brain off and you just Tell watch you it. one thing it had going for it. There's some wicked camera work. I mean, it's a little bit drone crazy, but in some of the final action scenes, yeah. there's some really slick camera work. Is it still Michael Bay? Well, he, I think he makes a cameo in it, actually. But it's got that style, yeah. I think it's different directors, but it's but got his people out, out, of the, out, of the, um, out of the Michael Bay school of photography, of photography. Yeah. So, right, there let's move go. on then. So <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. Oh, I didn't give it a score. I would say about a 7 out of 10, to be honest. Yeah, like, see? <laughs> it's a 7 out of a 10. But I can do that, right? Yeah. Like 6.9. I'll give it 6.9. <laughs> it's a 0 out of 10. It should not exist. <laughs> right, so we're moving on to the bike riders. I'll give a brief synopsis to this quickly what I think. I've seen the trailer. Basically, Elvis gets a bike, gets in loads of bar fights. Tom Hardy has a stupid voice like he does in every movie. And then Jodie Comer just pops up in it and going, oh, you shouldn't do that. It's really bad. That's what I got from the trailer. Is that what it's like? I was going to say, don't, don't go on Andy's review. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to preempt this. With, I'm not going to watch it, so... I have scored it a 7 out of 10. <laughs> wow. Well, no, I'm going to come. My wife's just laughing in the background. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... But, but look, 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 I've got the last five films, and, and just two of them happen to be 7 out of 10. <laughs> just two. You know, that, that's that's 40%. So, if, it's kind of like a, a gas-fueled Goodfellas, you know, kind of looking at a period of history watching the characters grow together and how the times change. Um, I thought it was really good. Tom Hardy, great, puts on a really crazy voice like he normally does. Austin Butler kind of channels his inner Jimmy Dean with a whole moody, handsome guy. And Jodie Comer's accent is baffling, but apparently it's spot on to wherever uh, the region it is. She she, comes she's from, she's, she's, cra does. she's crazy with her accents. Like, even though she's a fit, like, proper scouse accent like she pulls off so many other accents so well well she's good it's kind I, didn't of a know she, I didn't even know she was a scouser until like I saw her on a TV interview I was like holy shit she's from, she's from Liverpool That's so it's like, a, it's like a love triangle triangle between her um, Austin Butler's character and Tom Hardy and it's quite an interesting dynamic and all three of them are really really well acting there's some some fun kind of other 
uh, actors that pop up in parts. I won't ruin them, but you know, there's there's a certain guy, and you immediately think. God, yeah, he couldn't be more of a biker if he tried. Um, oh, cool. So no, I'm going to see that this weekend, actually. So I'll get it was away. good. Um, any opinions on your favourite Tom Hardy crazy voice? Well, in in, 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 well, the only time he actually has a normal voice is when he's Gorgeous George in... Um, Rock and Roller. Rock and Roller. And in um, Inception, he has a proper voice. And then everyone really has the same. His, his voice is Bane. Is, is, his voice is of Bane is insane. Even in Taboo, I was and watching a trailer for Taboo the other day on Netflix, and he's like, like "What's right. that one way? Is it Legend? The one where he plays the craze? Is it? Legend? Yeah, yeah, no, but, he, but he's good in that though. Like his accents are quality in that. His he's accent a, was so funny. I watched it and kept laughing all yeah, the way yeah, through the film. But then, like um, it's a also, what was it? Warrior as well. He's good in that. He has a good. I think it's Philadelphia that's based in. He has a good Philly accent. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that's a 7.1 out of 10. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Your rating right. system means nothing. Every time you give it a 7, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's, it's a safe 7. You should it? just start rating all your movies from 7. So 7's like 1. <laughs> <It's right laughs> all right, well, I saw Sting as well. I gave that 6 out of 10. Pretty decent little creature feature. Um, I gave Inside Out two, which I'm going to see. I haven't seen yet. Have you? Uh, I'll see yeah, it. That eight, eight out of ten. I haven't seen it, but all I've heard is essentially it's the same as the first movie with a few extra emotions. Yeah, it's just like teen emotions. I would say it's, it doesn't rock the boat. It doesn't change anything. It's not dramatically better. It's just a same essential it, movie with some new emotions added. I in. didn't find it as emotional as the first one, um, but it was still good, well animated, lots of ice hockey. So it's it's hard to make a bad Pixar movie. I know that there are some that are close. I wasn't a fan of Luca. Luca's Pixar. I haven't, I, I haven't See, watched I love Luca. Luca. Yet. I haven't even watched it yet. No, I've, like got, I've got the artbook and everything. I've never looked. I've never watched it. The, the story didn't feel as uh, it didn't feel as like, as well. Not so big on the cars ones, really. Yeah, those are a bit off too. They're okay, you know. Um, and then also sort of quiet place day one. Yeah, we're going to go there now. So seen that. We've got, we've got um, a picture for that one on the screen. Okay, uh, eight out of ten. Yeah. it looks good. I've seen the trailer. Thing. The trailer looks good. If you look at the photo, you can't you can't see the photo on my screen. But if you check out the photo of the dude, do you not think that guy from Strange Things looks like in this picture Gene Hackman from the Superman movies? Right, you go and well, look. I can't see the picture. No, no, no. I mean, but go and look online, right, of the, of the of the poster and that. Do you not think he looks like Gene Hackman from the Superman movies? You'll be like, oh, my I'll, God, I'll, it does. I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, yeah, but it's, really... it's, it's really good. It's more of a character piece than um, an action flick. It's, you know, he's got a really good uh, central story about the relationship between two main characters. Mm. And I think the smaller moments in the film, like the smaller intimate character moments far outweigh the actual action yeah. scenes. I know, it it's looks good, like, the trailer um, is quality. Like, it's well, yeah, it's like Before times. Sunrise, or you know, the, the Richard Linklater films with the two characters, kind of a me cute, but during a, an apocalyptic alien invasion. Yeah. So, yeah, really, really enjoyed it, actually. Very that, good. Man. And I think Joseph Quinn's going to be massive, especially once uh, Fantastic Four hits. Yeah, no, it does look good. I'll, um, that's another one we're going to see this week, hopefully. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, place. that's that's gone on my movie roundup. Two sevens, a six, up. and two eights. Dumb. We um. <laughs> yeah, like it's again. I've only there's <laughs> only you that's seen most of these. I know. But no, I've no, just, just, just busy. Going to go this. We're going this weekend. We've got like movies we need to tick off. But then, like I said, Axel F's out today. Um, tomorrow, today. I'll say third, third, I think it's today on Netflix. They've not so. really pushed it. I didn't even know no, it was it's coming been, out. It's on, it's on, it's on, being on trailers and that. Excuse the cat, he's going to try on the keyboard now. Down you go, buddy. Um, yeah, I've, Which I've, one are you talking about? Axel F, new um, Beverly Hills Cop oh, yeah, yeah, 12 yeah. or whatever they're on. Um, but it looks good. Like Again, it'll just be interesting than, to see um, if it's... I hope it's better than that Coming to America sequel he made, which was absolutely abysmal. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be better than it depends if he can channel the inner, inner Axel F like it used to be back in the day. But. The best thing he did on um, Netflix, he did that Dolomite film. I haven't I watched that. It was cool. That was really good. 
now. But that's yeah. that's what that's, that's what was also up for watching this week. So right, so let's move into it. I haven't watched this episode either, so you have to be careful of spoilers. But <laughs> House of the Dragon, which we all agree, we don't give a shit. I'm gonna leave that one to John. <laughs> <laughs> the dragons could nuke them all in one scene, and we'd I'm be like, just... "Great, done, job done." I just caught all three episodes yesterday. It's three now, right? I think it's yeah, three. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. I just watched them all yesterday, and I still don't care. Yeah. Like, Wednesday. I loved Game of Thrones. I'll give you the last five episodes of season eight sucked. Like, they did not understand the characters. They just... Mm, yeah. They definitely screwed up the last five episodes of Game of Thrones, for sure. But you cared. You cared about almost every character on that show. You were supposed to hate Joffrey. People loved to hate Joffrey. People tuned in to hate Joffrey. Like, you were supposed to hate Jamie. People loved Jamie. You're supposed to not like Tyrion. Like, all those characters you were either supposed to love or hate, but you you cared about what happened to all of them. I've watched a season and three episodes of this show. I barely remember anyone's name. I definitely couldn't spell anyone's name, and I don't <laughs> care if them and their entire families get burned. At well, all. when Spenner said earlier on it's a slow burn, I think they should all die in a slow burn. Like, <laughs> it well, feels I... like it's a slow burning already. Like It feels like we're suffering by watching the show. Yeah. I think the, the, the most interesting angle for me is probably how the dragons are treated like nuclear arms. Yeah. yeah, yeah but outside right. of that, I'm, I'm with John yeah. on this one, it's it's not really it, like, grab like, me. I think I'm watching it more because obviously because I love Game of Thrones. You have to, right? Yeah, you kind of watch it. Hoping, we're watching it hoping something yeah. good it will get It will get better. Watching and it as a completist. being rewarded. Right, just because you need to complete it, right? You need to be like, I've watched it. Exactly. It's like in the, fir- the, um, in the first episode, like, so, well, I haven't watched the second one yet, or the third one, to be honest. But in the first one, it was like, yeah, this is like, we pause it, did shit in between, like, then it could get on because we're like, it can wait. But then when you get to the yeah, end, the, the end bit, well, I'm not going to explain any spoilers for anyone who's watched it, but the end bit, it's like, what the fuck, they cut some kid's head off. Because, and it's like, yeah, that's pretty grim. If you started yeah. with that and see the aftermath of that in that yeah. episode, I would have probably been bought. the second episode with the kid. It's not fun. No, no, right, no, no, no. I'm interested. But in the newest episode, a servant is sent away, or a girl is sent away with dragon eggs, and the writers have confirmed that those are the same dragon eggs yeah. that Daenerys gets. I read that this, this morning. Yeah, that's there. It's, it's like, oh, link. good. So those are, we're not going to, yeah, it's linked, and it's going to mean absolutely nothing for... What is it? Three hundred years. This show is what three hundred years before Game of Thrones. So what's the next? Something like that. Yeah, you probably... sit there and just fester for three hundred years. What is it? What is it about? What is it about prequel shows that just ain't working for us at the minute? Oh, did you see that thing I sent you earlier? That's about... rolling into the acolyte, by the way. No, but... yeah, 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 we'll that. We'll fall out. They are. They are currently filming. Uh, Duncan Egg. I don't know what they're going to call it, but they're filming the next spin off show, which is about um, Duncan the Tall and Aegon. They mention it in Game of Thrones, like uh, Duncan the Tall was one of the uh, Kingsguard, and he had a bunch of adventures. There are actually books that are written about like the adventures that these two had. And it's supposed to be really good. The books are supposed to be really good. I don't know about the show, but I know they've started filming it already. Mm-hmm. So I hopefully would, that one will be better. I would have preferred a spin-off with, uh, was it Arya who went off on the boat at the end of... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Jon Snow going into the north. That would have been, been cool. Yeah. That would have been cool to spin-off shows, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. With characters we care about as well. Yes. Like I say. <laughs> Somebody that might actually you might want to root for and yeah, not just... Yeah, for sure. Completely. Plus, she'd been trained with the whole face swapping and all of that. Yeah, she's not a fucking little mini it. ninja. She's just like proper, proper ninja in it around. We could have seen the, more of the whole of that world. The failure on all of this falls on George R. R. Martin because it's taken him 13 years now to write Winds of Winter. It's still not done. And he has told us that the book that comes after is going to be longer than Winds of Winter. So what's that, 20 years before we get the final <laughs> it'll be, it'll, it'll, be de- it'll be dead by before that comes out. <laughs> he has a clause in his contract that if he dies, no one's allowed to finish his story. No. So if he dies before the book is no. done, we'll never know how he intended to end it. But at the same time, 
he keeps doing other projects. He keeps doing TV shows and other books on other things. And it's like, why don't you just sit down and finish the books you've promised already before it's too fucking... <laughs> the books you've taken a massive advance on and you're not writing. <laughs> what, what other author could take 13 years to write a sequel book? Like, his publisher's got to be pissed. It's got to be oh, a, a daily, daily email, isn't it? Have you finished yet? Finish it? Have you finished it? Could you could you possibly have you've been telling people for five years that it's almost done? All he needs to do is write a sentence a day over that amount of time and then he'd have a finished he, book by he the could end literally of it. annotate it on a fucking dictaphone so, a sentence a day and just be like or right. Just write, or just write um, an outline and get a ghostwriter to uh, write or a even story. better still, why don't you just put the plot into chat GTP and let it write it for him? <laughs> Probably <laughs> is gonna <laughs> What, somebody close to him, I can't remember if it was an assistant or something, or maybe just a friend, said the reason it's taking so long is because he has written himself into a corner and somebody that he needs to finish the story, he has already killed. So he has to kind of figure out how he's going to get to the part of the story he needs to get to, while the character he needs to advance the story he has already murdered. Well, that's bad. Just Planning do a fake out. Just, yeah. just do a fake out. She just, wasn't, just, so just, at some point, wasn't really just marvel that go shit. Back and rewrite a bunch of shit yeah. to try and make it work. Just, just marvel it. It was all. It was all. <laughs> all then, do a lost thing. Then, it just doesn't all it make great. sense that the Game of Thrones TV show went off the rails if the guy writing the books? doesn't know how he wants yeah. it to finish because yeah. he fucked up his own story. They were screwed, really, because they had to yeah, finish they were it because of the actors screwed. under contracts and stuff. And that's why they and dropped then, all so badly. And not only that, but did was that his original intention for the end of the story and seeing how bad it played out, he had to go back and be like, oh shit, i got to rewrite <laughs> all of my ideas. <laughs> that because they what's absolutely happened. fucking yeah. hated what happened. That's totally what's happened. Was it Brand of Broken? That broke me. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, really? <laughs> well, let's move uh, from... Arya, Arya not... killing the Night King was the worst part because it came out of nowhere. The whole thing was about John killing the Night King, and then she comes in at the last second, murders him, and then it's like, oh, John's whole story was pointless after that. Everything was just... Everything he did was pointless. He did everything for that one fight... And it got taken away from him in like one page of dialogue. Unbelievable. Well, let's move from one turkey to another space turkey this time. The acolyte. The boy? No, the acolyte. Oh, the acolyte. <laughs> um, I have many things to say. You guys should go first. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to start with, what do they call it, a shit sandwich where you say something positive before you hit the negative. <laughs> A positive, so, a negative, a positive. <laughs> yeah, the light, the lightsaber fights were were pretty slick. Yeah, they were uh, cool. Yes, that that that's cool. That dude's mask like, is fucking cool. The mask was badass yeah, that's with cool the, with the grin on. Yeah, that's proper um, quality. That's about it, though. Um, so this this show in, in in one simple word is a fucking mess or phrase. I I feel like it. The oh. whole show was a is a is a mislead. Like they. They purposely went out of their way to try and get people to watch it by lying about things that were in it. So, like, advertising that Carrie Ann Moss was in the show was kind of funny when she's in three minutes of the TV show. And then the other thing, they went out of their way to tell us, oh, uh, some Jedi has a lightsaber that also is a whip. Yeah. And people were like, oh, my God, it's from a book, and they did this, it's all tied in. We haven't seen her yet. I'm pretty sure it's the green-skinned one. I think that's the one who has the lightsaber whip. It's the green-skinned one that they have. Oh, the one who's married to the director in real life. I can't remember what the character what the character name is. I don't remember her name. A little bit of nepotism there. inconsequential. But I'm pretty sure it's the same um, Barris, isn't it? Barris Ophie, the same alien Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the boss of the Jedi's. Jedi boss. Yeah, it's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the one that, they, that she don't even know her name. like in charge of everybody. I can't remember her name. Let's look at I can't but, really remember uh, any I of the names. I think she's the one with the lightsaber whip. But the thing is, this next episode, it has to be flashback again. It's got to be about what Saul and the Jedi did at the Witch's Temple. Which means there's only two episodes left. So what are we going to see? The lightsaber whip for one episode? 
So they lure everybody in with, like, Carrie Ann Moss is going to be a kick-ass Jedi for about six seconds, and then lights it, paper whips, and that's going to happen once. And, and it just feels like the whole show, they just promised us things that they're not really going to deliver. I just find it a really frustrating show because you had a whole clean slate setting it a hundred years back, all new characters, but they've just not delivered. They've given us a, a cheesy storyline with twins with the whole swapping identities and and then they yeah, do that was these so things. cheap. Oh, yeah, it's so cheesy where she cuts her braids off. I mean, you're gonna smell burning hair from a mile away. Hair. And also uh, she cut her nose off. Plus, didn't she have a tattoo on her? I'm sure one of no, it's the tattoos on her it? arm. Oh, tattoos on, on her head. She's wearing a jacket, so you wouldn't see it. No, it was a scene uh, in the first fight scene. She, it was she on got a, some it kind was of on, signal. Yeah, yeah, signal. Yeah, 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 on her, her head, yeah. one of them. I can't remember. To be honest, I'm watching it because I'm a I'm a loyal Star Wars fan. I'll literally yeah. watch anything, but I'm I'm not particularly. Just, it's I, the weakest of the show by a country mile, I easily. Think they, well, they, because it's that far back. They've made the Je Jedi's look like complete pussies. Um, like, also, children stealers as well, which is hilarious. Um, it's like, <laughs> oh, we'll, oh, you can't teach kids. We'll steal your kids from you and teach them. Weirdos. Um, I, I think the dude that got his neck snap, what's his name? Oh, I can't fuck his name now. Um, the Bland Jedi. Yeah, the Bland Jedi. Oh, Yord. Yord right. Fanda. I'm glad he died, because... He was born a <laughs> shit, but then like the the um, baby Wolverine, shame she died because she was quality. That was she was really he good was character. The best character. Yeah, I was like she so like more intrigued in her story than I was. Do you know the main how character. popular that character is? That the fans there are fans who are just praying that she has some kind of regenerative ability. Or that her organs aren't in the same place as regular people's yeah. organs. So <laughs> to be she fair, actually, she, did, she didn't die. She's still alive. She did die spectacularly. That, that it was, it was a proper deaths. good, like, like proper because he just went bam, 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 three times and pumped her. I mean, three I, times did, I did admire the fact that they went pretty ruthless, killing off the yeah, characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, they killed arguably. But this is uh, like John and I had this keep the stupid secret. That yeah, yeah. Hiding. See, John and I had this conversation last week, wasn't it? And um, where. Like obviously, because they say that in the other Star Wars ones, they haven't seen a Jedi, uh, the Sith for hundreds yeah, of years. Yeah, the Phantom right? Menace. The same well, obviously, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, Sith there's a Sith walking millennium. around, right? And it's like, so we're like, do they all die? So then no one ever reports back that there's a Sith kicking about. And so in turn, the Jedi haven't seen a Sith for hundred years because they don't fucking know there's one kicking. There or, are rumors like, that there might be a season two of this show. Oh, I'm kind I'm of really hoping with the ratings yeah. being as poor as they are. They won't do that. Shit but the fact that they're saying that there might be a season two tells me Soul can't live. He's the only one left that knows that he can't live. I, uh, yeah. I really don't. But any, here's, here's the notes I got for the last two episodes. <laughs> um, keeping Sith a secret was just a dumb plot point. Yeah. Like the underlings for the Jedi High Council are just like, don't tell the Masters where there might be a Sith. That's so the cheapest, crappiest thing you could have written on a page is like, let's just not tell our bosses that this terrible thing is possibly yeah. happening. It's almost uh, like the, the tree from bugs, Phantom Menace. The tree bugs from episode four looked cheap. They looked like a, a late nineties, early two thousand monster of the week TV show, like like a ten dollar animated character that they bought from somewhere else and just cut in it looks horrible for some reason the last two episodes have been 28 and 27 minutes yeah like we can't like we can't buy a 45 minute episode given the budget i mean how much money 180 million it is exactly. the second most expensive star wars show that they've also, made but it, it behind also... andor and andor was 12 episodes mm. not eight um, isn't it mostly filmed in the volume as well and I thought that was a point where they could, so. they could I save money on location uh, costs. What's the name of the girl fucking that made this one? Hedlin. They... She did not like the volume, so I don't think they're filming on the volume. Oh, right. Well, that's ridiculous. Um, he, Adi Mundi, and Plo Koon make appearances, which for a lot of people breaks canon because they're there. But it made no sense for them to be there. Why would you need those two Jedi? 
They, it adds nothing to the story to have two Jedi we already knew existed in that story. There's no reason for them to be there. Um, and then I have, um, there, there was a part where May ran off and left Kamir, and then she screams, and he panics and chases after her. And this is before we knew the revelation, and the only thing I could think of at the time is he could not possibly be a Sith because they don't give a shit about their masters or their apprentices at any point for any Sith story we've ever heard before. They don't care. Their apprentices and their masters are literally only there to accomplish a task, and then if they die, no one gives a shit. Sith apprentices typically dream about killing their masters, and masters always have an extra apprentice or two waiting in the wings for when they need to kill their apprentice. So I cannot see a Sith master, or potentially if he was to be her master at the time, giving a shit if she died. And he seemed genuinely concerned. So looking so, at... Sorry, John. Um, just looking at IMDb, right? So this is interesting. This might answer our question about what happens to Sol. He's only in five episodes. How many episodes were you? Yeah, but is everybody only listed as five episodes? No. See, May and Ocean is, is seven. Um, Master Kalanaka is listed as five. Yord listed as four. He died in the last one. Um, uh, Yord died but, in number five. Did he? He's only listed as being in four episodes. The, yeah. The counts aren't right until yeah. the end of the season. Because okay. I think people were getching on to the fact that if you just went and looked, you could see if a yeah, character yeah, was... Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. not accurate. <laughs> so I've fallen into that trap. <laughs> um, well, that also, would be a great there was a part, like when Kamir gets caught in a trap and in, lifted up into the tree, and then May has that change of heart, where she's like, I don't have to be bad anymore. I'm going to go turn myself into Kalnaka. Uh, uh, Tamir tells her just before that, oh, he's just past the corner over here. Like, once you pass these trees, you'll be at his home. But somehow she leaves him hanging, runs out of scene, and he somehow gets down, changes costume, beats her to a Jedi, kills the Jedi, and escapes before she even sees him. Like, I don't know if the writer knows how time works, <laughs> but would not possibly have done the things he did and still be the guy that know, he could have used Jedi speed the, yeah. the way it's going he could have like a time turner from Harry Potter because <laughs> nothing else makes sense <laughs> <laughs> nothing <laughs> else makes <laughs> any <laughs> sense um, I mean Kamir was such the crossing the streams here, there how, two franchises yeah. here's how I see it imagine so for this show they introduce one dark greasy character and here's the surprise that's the villain like, it feels like if you were watching episode four for the first time and the movie poster was Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Darth Vader, and the caption of it was, uh, one of these is the villain, tune in to find out which one. Like, it's so predictable that he was the villain. The part that bothered me is I was hoping the writers would have put more thought into it. All of my theories for the show were like, the guy who is obviously the villain can't possibly be the villain because that's the <laughs> laziest fucking writing I've ever seen. And then they're like, oh, by the way, it's just this guy. He's just the villain. Yeah, it's the guy we introduced in episode two. Right? It's just the yeah. They're well, going to have to really do something big in the last three to pull it out the well, back. I have a theory. I have a theory. I'll get to it. Okay, um, let's why, didn't, the theory. why didn't Stun work on him? It can't be because he's wearing a helmet. Because clones got stunned all the time. They're always wearing helmets. Um, I mean, that's why, to do with what it's made from and stuff. Well, okay, so it's made from cortosis, which comes yeah. from a book. Um, it apparently interrupted the mechanical workings yeah, of the Yeah, it caused them to short out, didn't it? But I don't think anything about that said that made them immune to stun rays. So I don't understand how that played out, but again considering all the other lazy, shitty writing, it doesn't surprise me. Um, May's whole purpose at the episode when she left Kamir was she was going to go turn herself into Kalnaka. But then after Kalnaka's dead, 
she fights the Jedi? Like, why didn't she just turn herself in like she intended to, and there wouldn't have been any problems? But she decides to change her mind again. In ten pages of dialogue, she changes her mind three times. So that didn't but make then any we've had the awesome cutting of the braids of uh, shot. <laughs> well, we didn't really need it, but... Shall we, shall we uh, close up the shit yeah, sandwich? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, um, I'm uh, not done. Oh, no. <laughs> not done. I want to have dinner, hurry up. Pandora's box. Clearly, Soul holds a secret. Uh, Torben had face scars they still have never explained. Kelnaka, whatever happened, Kelnaka went into exile. So something terrible has happened. We don't know what it is. Clearly the Jedi are They involved. keep alluding to it, though. They go, oh, I know what happened, I know what happened. I like, think the next episode has... Like, today's episode has to be a flashback explaining Tomorrow's it. for us. Yeah. 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 Um, there are some lines that they say. So, so Asha says at one point to Yord, my mother could get in a Jedi's head. There'd be no point in mentioning that if it wasn't super relevant to what's about to happen. Oh, yeah. Sure. So, so either one of the witches caused the Jedi to attack the witches in that flashback, or the one I'm really hoping for is that Kamir is not a Sith, that he is being controlled probably by Coral, the... Well, they the Stabrak? They've been saying a lot that he, he could be like a predecessor to the Knights of Ren. So, I've heard that. I, yeah. I don't think he's actually a Sith. No, I'm I don't think he is really either. Because his actions don't match a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord wouldn't care if his apprentice got killed. No, he I don't think he's Sith. protecting her. He wouldn't have taken her out of combat. I think Coral, the, the Zabrak one, is protecting her and mm. Asha. Because she feels like their mother, and she's using Kamir to do it, so that she doesn't have to look them in the face. They don't know who she is. She's just controlling them. Um, I also think, if that is not the case, there is a line that May says. There's two of them. Um, don't choose them again. Choose me. And oh, then yeah, she yeah, says, a life without purpose, love, and family. Um, like, you can't live a life without purpose, love, and family. We met May as a child. She was hateful, spiteful. She didn't listen to anything. She tried to light her sister on fire. None of those lines sound <laughs> like May. Do you know who they sound like? They sound like her mother. So, this is going to be take a bit, but... <laughs> Darth Still have a thing to review, John. <laughs> Darth Plagueis was Palpatine's master. He actually lived all the way up to Phantom Menace. He died sometime in the time of Phantom Menace. His uh, Plagueis, not Plagueis, but Palpatine says Plagueis developed a way to live forever using the Force. But it wasn't magic. He didn't use the Force to prolong his life. Plagueis was a bioengineer. His plan was to make clones and then use the Force to transfer his mind into the clone bodies. So he would essentially body jump and live forever. And I think this is the precursor to where that all came from. I, I don't think that the children were Force-born like everybody seems to be panicking about. I think Anasea, the the black mother that looks directly like May and Asha, I think she cloned herself and then let Coral carry them to birth because they don't look like, like Zabrak at all. They look exactly like the other mother. So I think she cloned herself, carried them, and then when they reached a certain age, she was going to put her mind in their body so she could continue to live forever. And I think that's what they were alluding to when the one said, I carried them, and then Anasea said, I created them. She, she physically cloned herself, put them into the other mother to carry, 
and then her plan, that whole ceremony, her plan was to put her mind into the, one of the bodies when she died. And I think when May fell during the burning of the temple and Anasea was killed at the front gates, I think she separated her mind and put it into May's body. And that's why May doesn't know what happened to Asha, even though she's the one that lit the fire. She doesn't know that that's what happened, because it's not it's not May that, that she's talking to. It's Anasea, and I think Coral is the one that's controlling Kamir. So they're still working together. They're just trying to do it under the Jedi's nose. And the reason that May never had a lightsaber is because you have to learn how to bleed a lightsaber crystal to make it red. And they're not Sith. They don't know how to do it. And that's how they're going to explain later on why Sith haven't been seen in a millennia. Because we're going to find out that this isn't a Sith. These are two witches who are just pretending to be Sith. And then we can brush that whole story under the rug like, oh, there aren't any Sith because these weren't actually Sith. And that's how they'll get away with lazy story writing. If it turns At out to be right, it'll hoping. be fantastic. It'll be like John smelled it. I'll tell you what, get this man a job on the Acolyte season two. <laughs> he's, <laughs> ready, he's ready to I, go. I literally have it listed as hope on my notes <laughs> because I'm hoping that that redeems the show. Because where it's going, it I'm, it's terrible. I'm very embarrassed with that. All right, well, let's move on to something that we've all enjoyed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. on. I'm going to close this shit sandwich with uh, Ben We're Mendelsohn back. is returning in Andor Season 2. So that's nice. positive. Happy about that. I just rewatched the Andor last week. Sweet. So that's that's some good news to end on, on the Star Wars tip. But, yeah, John, that's some good... good uh, Good uh, prophecies coming out. Look, I, I may not like the, the fucking show, Nostradamus I, of Star Wars TV shows. <laughs> I may not like the show, but I have hope that it could redeem itself by the end. I don't want a Star Wars project to fail horribly. No, no. But at it all. just feels like every time we come to one of those things where it could be a choice, they take the laziest possible like, choice. Like um, somehow the Emperor returned. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. One the, of the, the laziest. Worst dumbest choice in Star Wars ever. But as for my clone theory, it's the same thing with Palpatine. When he returned, he has all those clone bodies. Because right. that's what he was trying They'd to be do. Linking trying that to in with, when they were linking that in with a Mandalorian, weren't they? Yeah. With, with the, yeah. the trying to clone Grogu, Grogu and stuff. Like that. That's what Palpatine was trying to do. He was mm. trying to clone a body that had Force capability and he was going to move his mind into it. Then is it kind of pitting science against religion on a kind of like Jedi being religion, Sith being the science? Well, yeah, Ben's bringing it, bringing it to religion science. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's going All right, to... Uh, let, let's, uh, let's move on to more science based stuff and like... Boys? Brutal, <laughs> super bullshit. Move on you to almost boys. got... I, I, I looked at John there, I almost saw a bit of, a bit of um, a butcher there. <laughs> and this face, there's a If you can pull off like, that shit, shitty British accent yeah, that he pulls off. It would be a great ending if they could pull it off. Sadly, I don't think they're going to be able to. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna take some lazy way out. But watch the next episodes. I really do think that that's not May. I think May died, and that's. Yeah, no, we'll see. We'll see what happens in today's one or tomorrow's one for us. So, yeah, yeah. For right. Sure. So, boys, season four is it started a bit slow, and it's got brutally awesome again. Like this is some funny yeah, shit. Episode happening. four was was flying, flying death sheet were hilarious. But it's, like, it's um, fucking comedy or the animals. It's either. Homelander. Homelander just steals the show. Yeah, he does. He does. It's yeah, so good. He's like Joffrey, like you're saying, yeah. the villain you love, love to hate. Yeah, Actually, there's no redeeming so part to Homelander at all. You don't ever watch it and be like. I love this guy. You're just like, I love to hate him. I bet he, he, the he, only downside I find to the boys is we already know that season five is the final season. We know that Butcher and Homelander survive into season five. So all this talk of Butcher dying or them trying to find a virus for that'll kill Homelander. We know it's all going nowhere for at least another season and a half. It'll be fun, it'll be, be fun to get episode. there though. It will be fun to get there. 
Yeah. It's like, so um, it's like all, anything that happens for the next season and a half is going to essentially just be leading to these characters probably dying at each other's hands. Yeah. Well, I've heard, um, you know, the, um, oh, God, what's his name? The, the, the actor who's um, playing, who Black... playing Negan, Jeff. Oh, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. yeah he's, not... He, he's not real, is he? He's um, a hallucination. That's what oh, I've been now he... picking up on. Yeah, just like when he sees his wife, yeah, Jeffrey yeah. Morgan is gonna. Maybe it'll be his dad or something. Because no one else is seeing him. You know, he I thought I scene. thought it was supposed to be his dad. I thought that's what I, uh, well, I think. I think that might be the case. That's like what they were alluding to. Is also isn't an, it? Agent, an agent or something. Yeah, and he's, he's having conversations in his head with his dad. Yeah, for sure, it's gotta be. Or, or at least somebody he respected. It's not a nobody. It's somebody he respects. Hmm. That, that is talking to him in his own head because of how sick he is. Yeah. Because he's funny, yeah, because that last scene where he chopped off that dude's leg, he's talking to that dude and he's looking across, but that dude isn't looking across. Yeah, him yeah. Like, exactly. He's, he's not yeah. acknowledging he's there. And, and being a big fan of uh, Supernatural, it's fun seeing all the different Supernatural characters that Eric Kripke keeps putting into the show, especially the old human centipede fella. That was... Uh, that was bonkers, that bit. <laughs> yeah, the whole show. Could, could have done without seeing that, I can tell you. It's, 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 um, oh, it's the bum juice on his face that creeps me out. Oh. <laughs> um, it, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it just gets like, it still has that comedy, like, stupidness, like, brutal, like, like just superhero people doing stupid shit. The flying shit sheep were, were, were great. The V sheep, the, the it's like, oh my god, they made a V ball and then the sheep turn up. It's but like, I think it's a hilarious. danger with... The V chicken about, was the funniest um, one. Well, with, with how much we hate Homelander and all that, but episode four, you start to feel a little bit towards him. There's a bit, well, there's a little bit... Oh, yeah, the no, doubt Vod, no doubt Vod created it. Oh, completely, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's it clever made, because made it's twisting. Yeah. It's making you start to feel... Some yeah, because they, 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 when she says him. about them where they where they psychologically sent him to um, therapists and stuff to teach him love. And so he always has that need to be loved. And yeah. so that's what fucking fucks him up because he's always got that need that he can't shift it in his head. And that's when he ends up seeing like his multiple personalities going like, Nice. Yeah, his, his performance is just head and shoulders. Yeah, and it's been, um, not, not that there's bad performances, but no, no, he, he is, is raising the game. Yeah, yeah. He should get an Emmy. It's and it's, so um, good. it's when he starts talking to his kid in that again, Ryan and stuff, where in the last episode, where he's a bit more like, nah, just do it. Like, I'm not going to try and, like, I'm not going to tell you what they did to me where they made me do shit all the time. If you don't want to do it, just don't do it. Yeah. And he's like, and then that's where the empathy comes in, right? Because you're like, right, but it's what, like, He's just saying to his kid, being honest with his kid, just saying, don't, don't be forced into doing things. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. And what do you want? But to I do? think he's trying to get his kid to tell him no. Yeah. He wants somebody to stand up to him, and nobody does. And I think oh, yeah, he's yes, trying to get yes, his man. kid yeah. to stand up to him. And that's what he's doing. He's like, if they, if you don't want to do it, tell them no. If you don't want to do it, don't be afraid. Tell me no. Yeah. And I think he's trying well, I think to he did, though, didn't he? make his to... kid an equal as opposed to, like, yeah. some when he went to see pussy that's that, afraid of... Yeah, yeah. He, he wants a, a partnership, doesn't he? He wants yeah. that father-son relationship. He doesn't just want a lackey. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what he's trying to do. There was some... Um, there's some also, shots we, that... all know, we all know that it was the kid that killed uh, Ezekiel, right? No, it's the thing in his, his brain. You know, get that in the last episode where the thing came out of the rabbit. When the tentacles things coming out of the rabbit was trying to attack Butcher, yeah. that that was what was in his brain. The tentacles thing would have turned come... him into mush. No, it come out of his eyeball. Well, like, that's what I've got. Yeah, but I you think, think it would have turned Ezekiel into mush? Yeah. I don't think it was his kid. That's all that was left. There was no body parts left. No. He was turned into like goo. Yeah. Well, and the only thing I can think of is that the boy knew that that uh, that Butcher was in trouble. And showed up and just ripped Ezekiel apart and then left again. No, I don't know because he was proper. He was proper like affected by the fact that he squashed that dude on the wall, which was hilarious, by the way. Um, he was unconscious. Yeah, but I think that thing knocked him out, and I think that's the thing because you see it in another scene where it's climbing up his back. 
could be, it could be either way. Yeah, I, I don't, it'd I don't be know. interesting where it goes. I've, I think I think he's got like because where they're saying they've given that them animals V and stuff, then at some point it's created this parasite within the tentacle monster. Yeah. Maybe he could, there enjoy, are things, um, things moving inside his head, so yeah. maybe. Did you boys enjoy all the uh, pot shots of Marvel, like the giant yeah. shit or the phase? Yeah, yeah, stuff. that was fucking hilarious. I love the that. titles. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember offhand, but I just remember chuckling away. I love the fact that Will Wanting Ferrell to see Will trailers Fer- yeah. for every one. Like Will yeah. Ferrell was in it as well. Funny. Oh, that was a great cameo. Yeah. Really funny. It's, um, that good? It's, it's, it's it picked good. up again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good. I'm looking it's forward to it on Friday. Well, it's so we'll, um, well, we won't rate trailers. these until they're finished. Let's rate them when the Yeah, I don't think finished. we should rate it until it's finished. So, like, we'll move on to trailers now. So, the first trailer I've got is Batman Cape Crusader, which looked fucking awesome. It looked so good. It looked like a cleaner <laughs> cut version of the old cartoon. And I was like, right. I'm, it does. The first minute, I was like, awesome. I'm sold. I'm sold straight away. I'm watching it. Yeah. yeah it does cool. look awesome. But Batman the Animated Series has to probably be one of the most loved superhero for sure animated but even one of the most loved yeah but Bruce Tim's on it though so Bruce Tim isn't going to let it Bruce Tim ain't going to let him shit it up but but here's the thing it's the exact same show set a decade before it's just Batman the animated series but 10 years well it's like Batman year one essentially isn't it it was slicker a bigger budget and slicker animation but as long as the storylines are still on point my my right. point is, we didn't need it. There are so many other DC characters. Why are we rebooting Batman for the 30th Because everyone loves time? Batman. Who yeah, everyone Batman? loves Batman. People are going to watch it. Are you going to watch Batman or, or are other people going to watch I don't know, Plastic if Man? They did I was watching it. I was watching a series of The Question. Because, like, he's got they blank did faces, an quality. Equally good Green Lantern show. No, or, Green Lantern, yeah, but they have to be Guy Gardner over there doing Green Lantern because he's an arsehole. Like John Stewart's too squeaky clean. How do you too squeaky clean? You could have done an entire show. Nowhere near as good. No. You could have done an entire show about all the lanterns. Or or any other character. Like, why does it have to be a tenth I, re- I reckon they should have done a Batmite series. That would have been amazing. <laughs> no, like, no. Like, we could, have had, we could have had any other DC character... You could have had a combination. But I just don't think there's. DC no, I don't think there's any DC characters with the same type of gravitas as Batman. And like, his back catalogue of villains. I mean, he's yeah, got the best. He has best got the best villains. Back he's, he's got the, like, the it, name brand recognition. It's even going to be Batman or Superman. Let's face it. Yeah, like it. Superman. I just. I think. Again, I don't think he has the same kind of gravitas. As Batman. I am just tired of rebooting Batman every five goddamn years. Yeah. Like. There are how many Batman movies? Every one of them is a stupid reboot. It's not really a reboot because it's just it's just a. It is a reboot. Oh, it's it almost a reboot. like a. This Cape it's Crusader like a, is just a reboot. No, well, they're not going to tell the story. Ten or twenty gonna... years before the last one. Well, no, no, but again, they've just taken back their. Uh, they just thing. drop us into the Harley world of Quinn Batman. Is and, yeah, not yeah, the same yeah. Harley Quinn. None of the characters are the same. But character. was that Harley Quinn? I was a bit confused about that when yeah. you saw it. Harley that. Quinn is going to be an Asian psychology uh, doctor this time, but okay. she's not going to fall in love with the Joker. She's going to be her own independent villain. Not related to the Joker this time. From the okay, we'll see what happens with that then. You've obviously got a bit more insight. All I've done is watch the trailer. Yeah. So you've got a bit more intel. <laughs> well, let's let's yeah, move on because like we are. You know, well, I think uh, it looks good. So it does look quality. I, I'm sorry. Um, next, it looks it looks great. I'm just saying we don't need a, another Batman reboot. Let's face it, John. You're going to watch it. I will, of course, watch it. Let's, let's, do, let's do Dread, the animated series. Yes, all, in that style. Do, do yeah. Dread in that style. I'll oh, watch it all the time. Let's, amazing. let's yeah. get the Mega City 1 TV show. That right, we every week on. we speak about it, so you keep... I'm, I'm waiting we for the question. Dread, disappoint me by I'm waiting for the question. Be like, you haven't asked him yet, have you? I'll have to email him. <laughs> um, he's only licensed, dude. It doesn't make sense. But I've got contact with the other dude. He's a decision maker, so. Um, so next we've got um, My Imaginary yeah that's what it's the, the, the Imaginary the Imaginary yeah what did I say it's My, done yeah. it's done by Studio Panak yeah yeah it looks good it's made up of a lot of Studio Ghibli people and the movie itself 
looks like it's what the movie If was based on. Yeah, it's so it's actually like this one kid who has an imaginary friend who knows that when the kid grows up, he's not going to have, um, he's not going to exist once the kid doesn't need an imaginary friend anymore. So he tries to find his own way in the world of imaginary characters. The art looks absolutely ghibli beautiful. It does. Yeah. It does look good. I, I want. I can't wait to see it. It's not that far off, so I'm definitely going to watch it. I was going straight to Netflix. This as weekend, well, isn't, it? isn't it? Is it this weekend it comes out? I don't know. I, it's close. It's I close. like the fact it had um, J horror elements with the the kind of psychic. It's, with actually, the it's coming on Friday. Yeah. Coming on Friday. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we've got um, our smiles out on Netflix. So I'm gonna for sure be watching that on yeah, Friday. Yeah, fifth, fifth, it yeah it's on Friday. It's on Friday. It yeah. looks excellent. It really yeah, does look be, good. Yeah. Uh, we're all huge Ghibli fans. Yeah, so yeah it's gonna be cool. Yeah. Yeah. we'll have to. Well, we we spoke about. It. We have to have a conversation about. It. I'm I'm cool. almost disappointed it's dropping on Netflix and not on the cinema. Oh, you know what I'm looking yeah. forward to most on Netflix? La La Crocodile. <laughs> so, I don't think I've seen a trailer for that yet. Oh no, I'm looking uh, forward to um. Kit, what's it? Kaneki Kuman. It's basically, you remember Muscle Men Spin? Back yeah. in the day, it's anime. Yeah, that. I used to collect the little Yeah, yeah it's anime. Of that. It's that's on Netflix, a movie on Netflix on Monday. It's going to be cool. Well, out. I told you about that one I watched um, Ultraman Rising. Was yeah, quite yeah, I'm going to watch that as well. Yeah, watch that. Ultraman um, Rising is wrong. Is it wrong? Uh, Ultraman protected the city of Tokyo from monsters, and in Ultraman Rising, He's throwing the humans to the wolves to protect the monsters. Yeah, but it's a reboot. Like, it feels like a very millennial show where it's like, oh, the monsters are the good guys and Ultraman should protect them from the evil humans. And I'll give you, I could watch some humans die. But <laughs> it feels like they got the character completely wrong. Like, they, they broke him for some reason because he is supposed to protect the city from the monsters not the monsters from the city. Yeah, but isn't it it's his son that's moving forward, so they've kind of given it a whole new spin, isn't it, really? Yeah, they've given well, it that well, millennial well, um, spin. That's what yeah, I, I, I and that, enjoyed and it. And that let's, definitely hasn't ruined every other show they've done that. Well, let's, let's watch it, and we'll watch it, then we can all... I, I really enjoyed I it. Did watch it. Love so, it ne- as well. All right, well, I haven't. I will watch it, and then we can talk. So next that's one along, uh, Wild Robot, which looks amazing. Yeah, that yeah, looks, looks, looks really, really good. good. The animation looks amazing. It looks like really a good story nice, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, not much more I can say it's about it. The uh, tra- the it's made by the same studio that makes uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah. And it, it looks really, really good. I can't wait to watch that. Kind of like got um, Wally and Iron Giant kind of yeah, vibes. Yeah, vibes. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah it looks, looks really, really nice. Good, yeah. Beautifully animated. Yeah. Not much so we can say about that uh, until we know when it comes out. So we move on to Red One with the rock and the... I, I am not a Christmas person. I know I tell Andy It's going to look fun. I'm just year. wondering why the rock's dressed up as Deadpool. But <laughs> I, I definitely want to watch this. However, I think I've already predicted the ending and the twist. Um, oh, don't, don't, don't know. Yeah, yeah, leave it there, leave it there. I have I've but, not but seen like, anything um, other than the trailer, which you have seen. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I watch nothing it. about it. Except, I think Chris Evans is the villain. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's kind of thing. I think yeah, the yeah, twist to the whole is. thing is Evans is going to be tired of being on the naughty list, and he kidnapped Santa Claus for some really stupid reason of thinking that that saving Santa is going to get him on the do, nice do, list. Do you, do you like, think, this is going to be the moral of the story. Do you, you think this movie? I think, you, you, you I think you're right. Absolutely yeah. cracked it. Yeah. Just just hearing that makes me think. Watch the yeah, trailer again, yeah. thinking that Chris Evans is the villain. His name is Jack O'Malley. What are the odds he's not going to call himself Jack Frost before this is over? And the twist of them bringing him in to solve the crime, even though he's the villain that did the whole thing in the first place, it just seems too obvious. It's too <laughs> obvious. There is no John, you're missing your trick in life, actor. man. You need to be a writer in Hollywood. <laughs> There is no other big name actor in the list of the cast of the show that has any name that could be a villain. So the only thing that makes sense to me is that Evans is going to be the villain in this oh, show. No, the no. If you get it, if you get it right, you have to. Oh, I think I, I, I'm pretty sure you've got yeah, it I right. Think you're pretty the more sure I right. think about it, the more I'm like, 
Uh, I didn't do, know do, the movie was coming. I didn't see I'm it until sure I saw the trailer. I do, said do you think... the trailer minutes after. I'm telling you, it's the only thing I could think of when I watch it, and I've watched it three times. I think he's quite literally the villain. Do you think this film redeems The Rock's career, or is he going back to the WWE for no, a few years? Nothing's ever going to redeem The Rock's <laughs> uh, movie yeah. career. Then. Isn't this the movie that they said like he was showing up eight hours late yeah, to set? Yeah, he's being a dick on the no, other like, like, This is the one they were saying that was happening, and then everybody else on the show was like, oh no, that's not what happened. I, I don't know what saves... I don't, know if, I don't know if his career is actually in danger, or if it's just somebody trying to take down somebody that that's likable, I don't think it's in danger. But I, I don't think he's ever made a, a good film, or he's not he's not headlined a good film. He, he's he quite good a in very ensemble specific, class, it, it He is. makes a very specific type of movie. It's not it's yeah, not predictable like and lame. Yeah, it's not award worthy, but it's very it's a very sort of is predictable. It's an entertainment. It's an entertainment, isn't it? I like I, I like the Jumanji. The Jumanji first Jumanji uh, reboot film they did was good, yeah. but he was carried by a good supporting cast as well. Yeah, yeah. Jack Black, uh, um, Kevin uh, Hart, and Terry Gilliam. Yeah. yeah, great. So segue into renewing careers and saving careers. Josh Hartnett oh, in was... Trap. That was a segue. Trap, beautiful yeah. segue. I watched that trailer. Uh, I watched that trailer again today, and. He looks... run... When I first so watched good. it, I was like, oh, he's losing his kid. And I thought, oh, it's a horrible kid movie where she gets killed. I like the first trailer's better than the second, yeah. I think. And then I the watched it edited. again today, and I was like, actually, this is not what I thought this was. This looks fucking cool. Like, yeah. it looks the only really thing good. that concerns me It almost me looks like that, um, that um, sorry, John, it looks like that, um, uh, what's his name? John claude Van Damme movie, when he's in when he's in the um, Penguins Sudden Arena. Death. Sudden Death, yeah. That, it looks like, has that vibes to it. And I was like, oh, cool. It's like, Hold on a minute, bro. Before John speaks, please don't predict this film because I'm really looking <laughs> yeah, don't, forward don't, to don't, it. Don't. And you're, you're on fire at the minute. I, I don't want it ruined for me. No, the only thing that, that concerns me about this movie is it's directed by M. Night Shyamalan, who is known for making movies that have a twist at the end. But it his twists get so predictable in his last few movies that you're 10 minutes in and you already know what's going to happen. I remember watching The Village being about 15 minutes into that movie and being, oh, this is happening in modern time. And that's exactly yeah, I what I sussed that out from the opening credits. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, what's going to happen yeah. when we get 10 minutes into this movie and the most obvious ending is what's going to pop up and it's going to be his twist. And you're going to be like, yeah, but I predicted that an hour and a half ago like that's the only thing that's concerning me is is he gonna make a good movie or is he gonna go with his format of like here's a mystery until the last five minutes when the twist happens we might my riding that sixth sense wave that he had from i tw- think that he'll the, the josh hart the character will get away with it and that that will be the twist that the, the bad guy gets away um and frame someone else maybe but then that's really blatantly sets it up for a sequel yeah i don't know i just i think the first trailer is better because it, it immediately paints the josh hartnett character as this loving fun quirky dad and then it flips the script on you but in the second trailer it pretty much from the get-go this guy's a psycho i prefer the whole kind of rug pull and i almost wish they hadn't really they'd Kept just the kept trailer the first to one, minimal, yeah, yeah. so he just thought it was a dad taking his daughter to a concert, and some shit gets out of hand, and just left it at that. Yeah. What if the dad's not the murderer? What if the daughter's the murderer? And he's feeding her um, fetish, or well, they yeah, I mean, that feels wow. like a Shyamalan twist, doesn't it? That, that would be pretty crazy. Woman? I mean, they did that with that um, Abigail film that came out this year, didn't they? With the the little girl who turns out to be a, a vampire. Obviously, this is a, a bit more realistic to a sense, but yeah, that, that could could be. Or well, we've not seen the mum. What's the mum's story? Well, maybe they just yeah. all found their whole family. Like that's just what they're doing, right? They're just, they're the whole, it's, the whole it looks. Idea. It's a very. It looks interesting. Good. I will definitely right, watch. What, what it will be is is that the movies go to the theater and watch. I will definitely watch yeah, this. What one. it will be is. is, is so I'm gonna say it because my spot. But like, what it would be is, is that 
why they're all trapped in that building and the police are there all calling off trying to trap them, they'll do a live stream of the butcher killing someone. And then it'd be like, shit, he's, in, like, he's either here or he's there. They'd be in two places. I mean, it, it, it'd be good to have a decent thriller that's, you know, takes us on a, a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, it'd be good, yeah. It just, just yeah, wasn't trying to say, I was like, it looked thriller. really fun, it looked really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, fingers crossed. So, so right. for the question of the week. Go on and uh, go, and then we'll wrap it up. I've got two possibilities. I'll let you guys pick which one we go with. So I have okay. a question that is thought-provoking, and then I have another two-part question that's very geeky. So which one do you guys want to go with? Can we go with both, or is that, are we not going to I don't time? know. It would like, be a lot to answer. We're running just over an hour. We're running just over an hour. All right, go for the quickest. You feel, which you feel would be the quickest question to get an answer to? Okay, the quickest one is going to be the geeky two-part. Okay. So I read this article where they talked to Matthew Vaughn, the guy who's done Kingsman. Yeah. Um, oh, geez, I had a Just list Kingsman. of all of it. He's done a lot of stuff. Everybody knows Matthew yeah, Vaughn. Yeah, like, okay. He did X-Men First Class. Yeah. Um, Hitman, or not Hitman, um, he did that recent one, Kick, Argyle. As well, at, he? Kick ass. He did Kick ass. Yeah, yeah Argyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they talked to him, and he said, um, when it comes to Star Wars, what he would do if he was in charge was reboot the whole franchise. So I'm assuming that means start at episode one, reshoot, reboot all nine episodes, start over make it a bit i'm assuming a bit more modern i don't think he would shoot it scene for scene i think he would modern it up maybe add some new twists or whatever so part one would be do you think that's a good idea or do you think the entire fan base would turn on him considering how bad star wars is right now like how much the fans seem to hate it would a reboot from somebody with a genuine care for the franchise be a good idea or bad idea and if you could choose to make a story in this new line, like a, either a TV show or a movie, what would the story for your film or TV show be? Like, what, what story do you want to see? I know what cool? I would do. A hundred percent, I'd do a series of Clone Wars movies. Yeah. A hundred percent. But like proper, like, Saving Private Ryan level Clone Wars movies. Well, like right. what they did with the, the flashbacks they did. Um, like in Solo. So you guys already both got... agree with a reboot for the series? No. I'll, I'll, as for the reboot, well, maybe the last three, the, the sequel. It's got to be. It's got to start from the beginning because... <laughs> I couldn't do the beginning because be I can't. The whole story. It, it, four, five, and six, I'd never want to yeah, see. Yeah, that's it. That's the so thing. It's like the original. I'd rather so just leave it alone. Touch, yeah. I, I mean, I'd remake the... Because I feel like it's irredeemable at this point. Like, I feel like after the sequel trilogy, you can't fix it. And the next one that they're doing has that director who has said outright that all she wants to do is make men uncomfortable and that she thinks, uh, like, like, all the things she thinks are the things that people already hate about what's happening. And now yeah. they're going to make another Ray movie with a director who wants to make 85% of their fan base uncomfortable. Like, it's not going to get better. It's a recipe for disaster. I, I think they should mind the Clone Wars because yeah. there's um, familiarity, there's characters that people love, both old and new fans. You know, that, that uh, to me, yeah, the I Clone think, Wars like... trilogy, bring back, well, you might have to recast Hayden Christensen now, but that, that young girl, is it Ariana? Um, she's in that new she Borderlands played young movie. Yeah. Yeah, she she was great. I mean, she looked the part. I think you could really do that justice. Um, but I would not want to see them remake all of the films again. I think I'd rather have new stories or delve into areas we've not covered before. I could deal with them rebooting it as long as the person was going to be in charge for all nine films. Yeah. And as long that, as right? the person had a genuine care for the story and characters. If they let Dave Filoni run it, you know, if they let John Favreau run it, if they let somebody who quite legitimately gave a shit and knew their stuff... Tell you what. ...then I could deal with it. If they were just like, let's let the most famous directors of the day do it, 
or let's do it with somebody who just wants to tell some political story, I wouldn't want it because that's ruining it. But if you had somebody in there who could pass a, a legitimate test on Star Wars characters, then I think I could do it. And I have two concepts for TV shows that I'd want to see. Okay. The first one, I'm still waiting to see a droid civil war. In all the movies and shows, with the exception of the main light side character, everybody else always treats droids like shit. Even in the Mandalorian, in like yeah. the newest seasons, remember there's that bar that doesn't want humans in it, and the droids don't like them, and they're trying to revolt. Like, we need a show where the droids actually stand up, like I robot, <laughs> and go against the humans to try and earn their own freedom, because humans treat them like utter trash all the time. Even three PO in the sequel trilogy. The, the guys were like, well, we could drill into his brain and basically lobotomize him to get this tiny piece of information. And without a thought, they're all like, oh, yeah, let's do that. It's not like he hasn't been around forever. Let's just drill into his brain. And he's like, I don't want that to happen. And they're like, well, too bad. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and that felt really bad. Like, they, they really need a show where the droids kind of get their own, like the Techno Union back in the Clone Wars days. Yeah. We were fighting. It needs something like that needs to happen where people learn to respect the things that take care of their everyday life. The other show I want is a behind the scenes sort of imperial officer show starting out on the Death Star, the first one, where we're not dealing with the main characters. However, they still exist. But I want some imperial officers working in the Death Star just taking care of everyday life, like wanting to be part of the Empire. But isn't that Empire, like, that's kind of like a tag this, and blink car, comic. Do you ever read that? It's sort of like yeah, that. Yeah, that was fun. Where, like, was where they start working out for the Empire and they're happy to work for the Empire. It's like but Star Trek Lower show, Decks. <laughs> but as the show Probably. progresses, they start seeing the things that make them question it. And then every now and again, like Vader will walk through a room and give an order or choke somebody but then he'll go off. Like, he is not the character of the show. He just sort of exists. But it's like them dealing in the background, and then somehow the characters escape before it gets blown up. Like, they're sent on some stupid mission, and they're just like, I don't want to go do this. Why are they fucking they making me go do this? And then as they leave, the Death Star blows up, and then they reconnect with the Empire for Season 2, and somehow they're working on a Star Destroyer as they're approaching Hoth, maybe, and the whole season takes place with them doing it, and then maybe we find out, like, before season three, or somewhere in the middle of season three, they revolt, not revolt, but rebel, and they go join the rebellion, and they get to bring their information from the Empire to the rebellion. Uh, like, that would be an interesting kind of show, where we're not dealing with the Skywalkers of the whole thing, but yeah. we're seeing what it looks like from the people in the background who make the everyday work for the Empire. Would, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. But on on your thing about rebooting everything, I I've been thinking about it. <laughs> you could potentially do it as an animated series of movies. Uh, and then, I don't think the animation gets the same respect as the live action. No, but I, if you did it I, that I love, way, I if you did that, the, I think the Clone Wars is is probably the best Star Wars outside of the original trilogy. Mm. Um, so if you were to do the, 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 the rebooted movies like that in that style with a bigger budget, um, then maybe that it could work in that way. Like I say, I don't think as many people would go and see them, but then it would do something different and it'd be an interesting way of looking at them. Kind of like a like a a multiverse sort of thing. Like this is what happens the next universe over for Star Wars. Yeah, if you're you know, doing like thing, like, then we're you not could, really you... rebooting it. We're just like this is. Well, it's like what it did. It's, like, it's almost like the vision thing, isn't it? It's like another take. Yeah, out. like another chance to tell the story, but from a different perspective, um, like our else worlds and like you say, all that sort of stuff. It's a good question. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a t I think that's time to wrap it up. Um, well, you don't good. want to talk for two, three more hours? <laughs> no, because I want to eat. I'm starving. John's got a whole other list of animals. I know. Well, we can leave it, leave it until the next one. We've got plenty of animals to talk about. Um, yeah, the cool time there. That was a good conversation. It was good fun. But um, the next one, I'll watch some more movies. There'll be more things for us to watch. Um, and we'll have more boys. And, and John's theory about the acolyte might actually pan out. We will see. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm interested. We're going to have to have a, a John's Theory board yeah, so each time we do a film, we can tick it off, see how, how you get on throughout the year. Another two weeks, and then we'll, well see we're, what we're, we're only about two hours away from the end, so there can't be too much no, to go. Yeah, but you've already ruined Red One for me, because I'm, <laughs> conv I'm convinced you're right on yeah, that. I, I, I have to be. I looked up the actors on IMDb. There is no <laughs> other named actor that could be the villain. They clearly somebody kidnaps him. We don't know who it is. Shortly after, they bring in Chris Evans, and they're like, he's a level four naughty lister. Like, come on. It just made sense <laughs> that that would be the premise of the whole yeah. story. Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, that'd, yeah, be, completely. that'd be a nice shot of a twist that right at the end. Two trailer. I called it from a two-minute trailer, so we'll note that down for whenever right. that comes out. I've got to admit, when I saw the trailer, I thought it was a Netflix exclusive. I couldn't believe it was, it was actually a theatrical release. It's got a lot of big names in it for a real release, like for a Netflix movie, so it's got to be yeah, something. Yeah, it, it looked like the sort of cheesy thing they'd throw out there. I just <laughs> Right, I think we leave it there, and we have this discussion again when we see it. <laughs> cool. All right. All right, we'll catch you later, okay, everyone. Okay, guys. Bye. See everybody later.